Hi, my name is Darren D. Melanta, and this is my poem analysis on The Passionate Shepherd to His Love by Christopher Marlowe. Some background information on him. He was a poet and a playwright during the Elizabethan age, and he was only able to publish a two-part play as he died early at the age of 29, and the rest of his works were published after his death. He was thought to be a spy and committed and thought to commit espionage for England and Great Britain. And during a quarrel, he was stabbed to death, which was coincidental as four days before that, the queen was calling for his head. The first two stanzas say, Come live with me and be my love, and we will at all the pleasures, pleasures prove. That hills and valleys, dale and field, and all the craggy mountains yield. There we will sit upon the rocks, and see the shepherds feed their flocks, By shallow rivers to whose falls, melodious birds sing madrigals. Uh, this uses an A-A-B-B -B rhyme scheme throughout the poem, And in the poem it seems that this is more of an offer, as there are many promises in it, and it seems to be addressed to someone. And this also gives the setting of the poem. The next two stanzas say, There will I make thee beds of roses, and a thousand fragrant posies, a cap of flowers and a kirtle, embroidered all with leaves of myrtle, a gown made of the finest wool, which from our pretty lambs we pull, Fair lined slippers for the cold, with buckles of the purest gold. Uh, this uses symbolism with the bed of roses, as they're probably not talking about an actual bed of roses. It's more of a romance thing. And the posies have a double meaning, with it either meaning flowers or romantic, heartfelt quotes on the inside of rings. And these are the only stanzas that mention clothes that will be given to the addressee. Lastly, he also talks about pure gold, which is highly unlikely that will be given, as that was quite expensive at the time. <clears throat> the last three stanzas say, A belt of straw and ivy buds with coral clasps and amber studs, and if these pleasures may thee move, come live with me and be my love. Thy silver dishes for thy meat, as precious as the gods do eat, shall on an ivory table be, prepare each day for thee and me. The shepherd swain shall dance and sing, for thy delight each May morning. If these delights thy mind may move, then live with me and be my love. This basically shows how the promises are getting more and more impossible to complete and sh such as the coral and amber which were during Marlowe's age quite expensive along with the silver dishes that were fit for gods and a full ivory table and the most ridiculous of them saying that swains will dance and sing every May morning which is highly unlikely and lastly, it solidifies that this is an offer to someone, as it says, If these delights thy mind may move, which is like saying that if it convinces you. And lastly, here, uh, not lastly, here are some poetic terms. Alliteration, which is, which is shown through choral clasps and pleasures prove. Anaphora which is when a phrase is repeated several times which come live with me and be my love is repeated several times personification is used with the craggy mountains yield as that's like a human trait to yield or give ambiguity is posies as it has a double meaning and can be taken in or the meaning can be used different ways and a hyperbole, which is an exaggeration, is a bed of roses and 1,000 posies. It's probably not going to do a bed of roses or 1,000 flowers. Lastly, 
the whole poem seems to be like an offer to someone the writer wants or loves and it shows how it be those promises become more and more unachievable uh, and almost desperate and I feel like this is closely related to uh, p the Pure Imagination song from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory as both revolve around wanting to bring someone to a beautiful almost perfect place and describing like the setting and what they can have and thank you